Whoa! Welcome back to Woolsey Ross. Last time on the series, we covered motivation. I talked too much, and now I'm about to talk about variation as a key technique to make your ideas last longer, get more use out of them, and find more satisfaction. So let's press play on what we paused last time. Variation is something that is very subtle, but can also go a long way. Oh, I have made a pattern by mistake. That's not my intention. It's something that's more noticeable than you would imagine. It mixes up a calculated design, which makes your level consistent since the design ties back, but it also keeps it fresh because you're looking at something new with every block or every detail, for example. It, it doesn't even have to be that much effort. You see, I just scaled that down on each object's own axis, using hack, albeit, but still very much possible in the editor without hacks. Maybe I'll collectively scale these down sometimes. It just, like, it, it gets a lot out of one little detail. That's the way I see it. Now, look, I've got a little structure that just sits on the top, and it looks different every time I see it, so it's got a lot more joy with it, right? Now, everything's nice and dark. I do want a couple of opaque details on the top. What I might do is just use these spikes, kind of breaking the commentary standard of the video so far, but I don't really care. I'm having fun. That is important for creating motivation. There we go. We have a nice little foreground layer. Now, details, details, details. Something that can make a huge difference without really trying is entry transitions, which are the blocks here. Now, these can be really sick. Something I recommend trying out is playing with don't fade and don't enter. Maybe just having don't fade only. So the entry transition still happens. For example, this glow is still going to transition on and off screen. You see it shrinks at the edge and gets bigger on the right side. It just makes everything feel a lot more cohesive. Is that the right word here? No idea, dude. But I think it can really elevate a level and it's just nice to see attention to detail with it. I will leave you with that. Again, Let's get some more mileage out of these structures that I made. You can place these horizontally and just scale them up. But you can then create patterns and then it just, it just goes on. There's so much you can do without really lifting a finger. But honestly, once you get the hang of it, it's pretty amusing. And I think that's something you should keep in mind as a new creator is that it does get more fun, right? It may be a bit challenging and frustrating at the time that you're learning. But I think it is worth it to learn. Learn what each trigger does. Learn how how you can efficiently build, what these buttons on the side do, what these extra options do. I'm gonna add a little bit more to that music sync by pulsing the background up a lot to whatever it's, whatever it was, it's going up in brightness. Okay, I'm just adding a little bit more attention to detail with music sync here just to make this feel a bit more special. Can go a long way if you get the right timings and whatnot, that's why it's kind of important. You see how bright it goes there? Like if you have certain loops, maybe when the song changes, try changing them. Like maybe after this flash, I'll start a new pulsing loop. I mean, me personally with this level, I'm gonna start adding a pulse for the gray and make it a nice shade of red on a new loop. Like if you're reusing a lot of things, it's great for building efficiency, but you also want to mix it up as much as you can. As I said, getting the value out of what you've done. I'm spawning the complete wrong group here, dude. There we go. We have some red that's just fading in and out. I think that's just nice. As a change, it adds more color in. Try and progress apart as you're going through with a few different systems that work well together. That's my effect building advice. Can't really say that works too well or lines up too well with design at all, but again, try and break free from the standards and build what you want to build. Your vision of the level can go a long way. Copy pasting is obviously a great tool to decorate quickly, but if you take a look into some solid featured levels, they'll either copy paste only their base blocks to help them design later, or they'll copy paste entire structures, but they'll alter and vary the designs to make them feel different enough. It's quite distracting when you're playing a level and you notice the same structure being used over and over and over again. One thing you can do to prevent that is shape the structure differently and section your designs so you can put them into different shapes and stop the same one appearing over and over again. Air decoration is very commonly copy pasted and varied, but it works best if you have a few different types of air decoration that can break up the repetition. 
In this level, I added an arrow and rotated it depending on the place I copy pasted it to, so it's not just facing the same way every time. But the thing is, my arrow is blending, it allows the background to shine through it which gives it a bit of texture and actually makes it stand out as a single piece of air decoration. Variation can be seen as a little bit of flair or sauce added to an otherwise repetitive piece of decoration to allow it to keep standing out and give your level its actual aesthetic. I think that's pretty much all I have to say about motivation, so I'm I'm gonna commentate my finishing touches here. It's about finding what you like to build and continuing to do it differently in a way that's gonna interest you and the person playing it. To transition out of this part, I'm going to fade on this little glow object that's gonna put a lot of focus into the center of the screen. Just making sure it's locked there first. Yep, again, music sync. As soon as the song goes, it's gonna fade in after being off that whole time. I'm gonna delete this text because I don't need it. From this point, I'm gonna put slow rotating saws in the ground using the same setup as the other object when the flicker. And this is gonna subtly emphasize the fact that the ground is changing at this point. Cause it's like, oh, there's some saws here. Ah, no, 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 this would be more interesting, right? If the saws move towards me, I'm gonna keep the convention of don't fade only to make something consistent that's nice and noticeable about the level. And I'm gonna move them on. It's like a combined transition in. Eh, almost. Needs more, uh, elegance? Oh, group seven pulses to black. Interesting. So you know what? Maybe I'll just get full white blending saws and just slap them on group seven. Yeah, that's gonna be very obvious, but it's gonna make the transition more effective, I think. Yeah, why not? And then everything can, f ooh, ooh. Everything can fade out at that point. You know, when there's like a, I don't know musical terms, but the song definitely changes at that point. There can be a background fading on at this point for slightly longer. Okay, so we have something quite majestic to start us off here. I love that music sync. That's what stands out about this part the most. And then we transition. Oh, it kind of works. The background's a bit too bright. I'll figure it out. I think it works better with the background fading to black because black is a more useful color to transition in and out with than blue. Say, so this is gonna build up to the drop of the song. And with that, I wanna vary the colors instead of it just being blue and occasionally green. I think if I fade the background to black instead of blue, I will be able to use more colors and like a rainbow pulse leading up to that part instead of just using the same colors and not getting the variation that I desire. Something else that's just occurred to me is that I could also raise a couple of spikes up in this transition, maybe a bit smaller. See, my thought process is I can copy the values of a spike and then put a colored saw blade in there with the same values, making sure the rotation is disabled. So then I can create a similar pattern, but with a different object. And that's where some more variation is gonna come into play. Just not too sure how I'm gonna rotate these yet or scale them, but it should be fine. And it's working for saw blades. I just need to make sure that they move properly and go on T3 above everything else. Okay, so we're gonna put them here and then give them a group 39, which is gonna dip down from the ceiling about 25 on an ease out. And before that movement finishes, I'd like to start another one back the way it came. Doesn't quite move far enough, unfortunately. So let's just double that. Let's just see. We have the saw blades moving the way I want them and that's pretty much perfect variation. We're going from spikes to saw blades, which kind of makes this feel special while remaining true to what the level has built itself to be at this point. It's kind of consistent now. I'm also gonna stop these saw blades from fading out with the group 33 so they can lead on the transition a little bit better. Fortunately, I also need a vertical version of this, so I have to tweak it a little bit. Plus 50 and then we go minus 50 on the way down. Nice. This should just be an easy copy paste build helper to lead the part on. But again, I don't want the saw blades to be all blue. I want some green ones maybe. And then I'd like some saw blades to move further than others. So then I change the numbers on them and it just makes it a lot more, I don't want to say unpredictable because that's not necessarily a good quality of a level, but it should hopefully make it a bit less linear. Mix up the colors, especially in a group of three triggers like this, I could have 
of, say, where is it? Yeah. You see, I've got different colors in there, which really helps. I'm gonna go through some of these pulse triggers and just change them. Even if it's just slight, it'll be enough. Could add even a little bit of pink in there. Just really trying to break this up and set it apart. And there's also the case of rotating them separately. I'm even gonna double this up at times just by build helpering and then turning off link controls and just going back into these saw blades and just rotating them again, scaling them down, etc. So hopefully this is a nice standalone piece which kind of references the previous part, but also gives you a bit of energy to get into the next. Perfect, that's exactly how I want it. That concludes this episode of The Joy of Creating. I don't know how Bob Ross closes his videos, but he definitely doesn't say thank you for watching this Geometry Dash building video. Next time, I'm gonna drop some advice on building up your Geometry Dash level because I feel like I've got some pretty nifty, useful information that might help your level stand out that little bit extra. This is fun, I like doing videos in this style. Check the links in the description, leave a like and subscribe, and have a good day.